the virtual groom room. My name is Jack, your host, and today I'm bringing you another shaving video. And my choice of soap today is going to be Aeon by Grooming Department. This is in another new base by Grooming Department, fancy that. Uh, this is in his Nye base, spelled N-A-I. Uh, the thing that kind of stood out to me about this base, first and foremost, was the fact that it was, um, it was vegan. Um, I've never tried a vegan base from him before, so I'm curious to test this out. Uh, Rod's Shaves uh, reviewed this and gave it a score of 100. You can take Rod's Rod, Rod scores for what you want. Some of them are somewhat accurate, and I think some of them are questionable. Um, the scent on this, now he has highly emphasized the fact that he's not going for complex scents for this base. It's more to do with the cosmetic ingredients of the formulation of the base. But if, the, if I was to describe a scent to you, it would be a smoky wood, um, more woody than smoky. That's gonna be our soap of choice today. We're gonna to continue on with the uh, home-like start, I guess, plate reviews, just seeing what I like in terms of the plates. Today I'm using the 0.9 safety bar plate, and inside that is a second use perma-sharp stainless. Needed to think there. And my brush of choice is going to be this beautiful black anvil shaving um, Irish oak brush. So let me begin loading this soap and we'll get to shaving. Um, big thing, something I noticed, I did a test lather with this soap and I have to say that it lathered very, very quickly. Much, much quicker than a lot of soaps now, especially like elite bases. Something else I also think is very important regarding this soap is I tell you the cost. Uh, for this one puck of soap, this is $32. Um, I'd say the average now for high-end soap is probably about 22 to 25. Anything more than that I would consider pretty expensive. The only way I can see and the only reason I can think of this um, is not because of the scent formulation at all. It's because of the sheer amount of ingredients in the base. And I will put those ingredients in the description below as I've started doing more recently. You'll see kind of what I mean. There's a lot of ingredients. How much of them are ne how many of them are necessary? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know how much of a difference they all made, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of strange to me. I, I don't think, like I said in my video with DK, I don't think we're in a situation where we need more complex soap bases I want more complex scents. Where this doesn't take that box, I am very much a sucker for a decent soap base, so I'd like to try it out. So we're still loading here. I think that should be enough, but we're gonna carry on. Okay, load that loaded very, very easily. Let's just take off the specs and wet the face. Let me grab a towel, I will cut this out. Okay, towel has been retrieved. Let's wet the face and we'll get to shaven. So, like I said, this stuff was very easy to create a test leather with. So I'm expecting almost no time to lather at all. I have noticed that with a lot of the other base I've used from him. I wouldn't describe as any of his previous bases um, prior to this rather as thirsty. I think they've always been fairly middle of the road slash pretty easy to lather. I can feel the slickness on my hands of this so I'm expecting a very very slick soap. Brush has been loaded. Let's get to that one. Scent strength on this is quite low. It's probably about three, maybe four a push. It's a very non-offensive scent. I have a feeling it's going to be a wonderful lather. 
Judging by a lot of his other bases, it's not going to be a big voluminous lava. It's going to be pretty low structure, but to be honest, I prefer that anyway. Does it have coconut oil in it? Because that's often what people use. It does have a bit of coconut oil in it, but. So coconut oil often makes the lava much more voluminous. Yeah, this is building very well already, which is not surprising based on my findings with the test lather I did. Not, not surprising at all. But to be honest, as I've said countless times before, if I'm paying this amount for a product, I expect it to be fantastic across the board. Um, slickness, Ease of lather. To be honest, I wouldn't say that's um, common amongst quite a lot of the new soap bases. I think they all have their quirks and they're all somewhat difficult to dial in. It's the case for Sago and Sierra. They're not difficult to dial in, they just take a while. Milk steak, I would outright say, is somewhat difficult to dial in. Excelsior is very easy, I would say, but can take a lot of water. Um, something cool about grooming the pump as well more recently is he has said that he is going to only stick with three bases. I think he's in the process of narrowing the ones he wants to use. There is a strict focus on high quality cosmetic ingredients of stuff he uses. So I imagine that I mean, to be honest, it is very expensive. I'm not gonna deny the fact that it's expensive because if I said it wasn't expensive, I'd, I'd be lying to you. But if you have the dough and you wanna give it a go, I mean, there's no doubt this is gonna be good. <laughs> is it worth $32? Probably not. I don't think there are many soaps that I would pay $32 for. So this is difficult because this doesn't create the densest lather. Um, anyone that tells you it does, haven't used the densest lathering soaps. <laughs> it creates a somewhat dense lather, but it's not like Sierra Sago dense. I'm gonna go with that. I think we're good here. Yeah. So, where are we in the video? We are eight minutes in. Yeah, that's a quick lather for me. Okay, so as I said, we're using the 0.9 plate with the home like start razor, and in this is the second use perma sharp. Let's shave. Wow. So there's two factors to this. There's how smooth the razor is, because that's very smooth. And there's the pure quality of the soap base. Very, very slick. So, I would say outright, I've not used a vegetal or vegan soap base anywhere near as good as this. To the point where, well, I mean, 
Again, look at the amount of ingredients. So a lot of the reason why a lot of tallow-based soaps are better than vegetable-based soaps are to do with something called super fats. Now, what super fats are, the way I can explain this to you is super fats are any excess fat on the base of the soap base formulation. So if you have more fat, it would create those super fats. So you can create those how you want. There are ingredients that do better with super fats. Milks are pretty good. There's lots of good stuff. And I'm not sure if there are lots of super fat ingredients in this, but there are certainly lots of ingredients. Okay, let's do the residual slickness test where I, you know, shave. Honestly, if I, so let's say if I was straight razor shaving here, I can't grip hold of my skin. Um, it is very, very slick. But like I said, I expected this because of the amount of money we're paying for this. If it wasn't very, very slick, then it would, then it would be a complete rip off. And I don't really expect that from grooming department. Pretty much everything I've ever tried from grooming department in some shape or form has been very high quality. I would say that this soap base, in my opinion, would be easy to collapse which I perceive as a negative. Like, it can take a good amount of water, but not loads. But then again, how necessary is that when you have peak slickness with not much water, you know? It's not that necessary. Okay, let's go cross grain here. This is one of the slickest soaps I've used, I think. Yeah, it's crazy residual, residual slickness. But again, <laughs> all those ingredients have to be in there for something. Crazy. Mad slick, <laughs> honestly, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating either. I'm gonna have to go back and do some testing with some of the best bases at the moment. Because the last few times I've used um, Sega, I've been using a straight. And just the nature of straights, in my opinion, is that they're slightly less smooth, or quite a lot less smooth than um, 
Look at these. They do a fantastic job, but they're not as smooth. Well, to demonstrate the slickness, that's a complete against the grain pass, like on my face, with just residual, which is mad. Um, let's get the room, yeah. So my, my slight on this soap would be it's water, its water band is pretty low, but as I said, how necessary is it that it can take loads of water if the situation that it doesn't need it? And it's not hindered by the fact that it can't take loads of water. You can kind of weigh that up on your own. Uh, kind of my review of that point nine plate actually of the of the uh, home like start is I would say that the, the face fill on it is has a little less blade fill than the point nine uh, OC for me. They're equally as smooth. I would say that the OC is better at collecting lather on the face. Um, the angle is just as intuitive. It's still just as easy to use. Yeah, I think those are the two sweet spots. The 6.8 is too mild. I don't know what the point one. I don't know what the 1.18 is going to be like for me yet. I guess we'll find out about that. Let's uh, rinse the face and we'll get into the post. I can already tell that this post shave is going to be phenomenal. I would say that's something that grooming department always ticks that certain box. So let's block the face here. Yeah. <laughs> There's always going to be like a degree of like drying down. Face isn't tight feels very smooth. It feels quite tacky, which is kind of reminiscent to adding some sort of facial moisturizer. Uh, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave the, leave out the aftershave for a bit. I'm going to put in my write up at the bottom what the post shave was like and tell you if I needed to use an aftershave or not. So let's do a, I guess, a recap of all the stuff I used here. And I will let you guys be on your way. My soap of choice was the very highly rated Aeon by Grooming Department. Is it fantastic? Yes. Is it expensive? Yes. Do I think it's worth it? That depends for me. If you are a vegan and you, I wouldn't say you have... I like a huge amount of choice of elite soaps. You have some very good soaps, HHS, HSSC, Southern Witchcrafts, Singari's Vegan Base, Holy Cow's Vegan Base. Um, if you wanted to try something that I think compares with the very best tallow formulas, this guy. This guy does it for me, but you're going to be paying a premium for it, so please bear that in mind. My razor of choice today is the Home Like Start Razor, made in Russia, fantastic. This is my second razor to the carb I have. Uh, I, I love, love how it shaves. And my brush of choice was my 5,000 year old Irish oak wood with this really nice silver tip knot from Black Anvil Shaving. Great company. I shout them out every time I do a video because that brush is just a pleasure to use. If you wanna check out Black Anvil Shaving, he is very easy to work with. He'll make you, in my opinion, some of the best wooden brushes. 
There's a few other really good uh, wood manufacturers, like brush manufacturers. El Druida, I think out of Spain, makes some wonderful wooden brushes, but he is definitely at the top of the list for me. Yeah, I, I can tell this post is gonna be very good, but I, as I said, look at the right up down below. I've been doing that for most of my recent videos and you'll find out actually how good it is there. So yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed the video today, guys. If you know around here and haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so, I very much appreciate it. Apart from that, my name is Jack, your host from the Virtual Grim Room. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful day. Goodbye for now.